So the doctor still told me not to go back to work for a couple more days. I've uh, stopped the prescription medications, even my medical cannabis. I just can't afford it. And I've done the Wim Hof method again today. Um, it's a freezing cold shower. It helped me a lot with suicidal thoughts and and depression and kind of feeling sorry for myself like I I'm not good at anything and I feel like see some of these Wall Street guys I I uh used to work with someone killed himself. They uh you sort of get into this hole financially, this trap and it feels like you can't get out of it. And the bills and the debts keep piling up and you you owe more money than you make. And, uh... Fuck me, man. I, <laughs> if I chose to do the right thing in life and didn't go back and get my master's degree because I just really couldn't. I... Um, put myself through school at night and a bachelor's degree when I was 29. And that's 20 years ago. I fall into this self-loathing, self-pity kind of trap. Oh, I'm not good at anything. I'm not. I don't fit in. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And uh, it's not healthy. So I couldn't exercise today because my lungs are just completely shot. I took the cold shower and it made me feel a lot better. Really long cold shower and having a. Having a mom and dad that were artists that saw the beauty in, in simple things and of being in the moment is such a precious gift. And it, it's such a beautiful thing that they were able to attain this Zen state of being where they could create something so beautiful all by themselves. And I strive to get to that state of mind and despite my nerve damage and a lot of worries, I. I have briefly been able to do that over the years and it's like a blessing and, and a curse to have a, a, a parents like that because they they showed me a lot of the bullshit that people don't really see until much later in life when they're retired and they look back on their life and they said, wow, I, I worked all these years for that, for what, for that car, for that house, you know, and... Um, you know, it's 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 something here where you know my my brother and I could could have a a passive income and it would really alleviate a lot of burden and it would facilitate the art business from going going back online and and us freeing up time for our creative endeavors like our parents want us to. Um, we both got in trouble at a young age, my brother and I, and and um, you know, kind of really through no fault of our own, but. You know, my father was on heavy doses of prednisone, did yell at us a lot, and he did have a dysfunctional family. His family is so dysfunctional. Um, they, I, I, I feel like, you know, that's not an excuse. It's not, it's not a reason to dwell on. And, and um, you think about the easy way out and suicide and death and, and how that's not going to solve anything. It's not... But it's like this demon, the pain. It's like, oh, I'll just take the easy way out, you know. And um, it's it, it's it's been a struggle, and and I, I honestly don't care if people make fun of me for crying, you know. Uh, people make make fun of me. Good to hope it's an amusement, and and it's a real. This is a real documentary. This is a, This isn't about me being fake. There's very very few things. Um, personal things that I'm, I've neglected to share, that I'm reluctant to share. Um, it's too deeply personal, and a lot of them are not appropriate. Um, and uh, my, my past is something that uh, sometimes haunts me, as does the death of my parents. And, and grieving for me has been extremely difficult. It's been extremely difficult to do it alone. 
um, the few friends and angels I had that came to stop by were accosted by my brother. Um, and just, you know, to be confronted by the police, you know, when you're just going to check on somebody, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's made it very difficult. It was difficult for my dad um, because a lot of, a lot of people didn't understand his stance on helping my brother. And um, I just couldn't understand that he was broke and depending on me to take care of him and, and to help him with bills to make ends meet here. They just couldn't understand that, um, how anybody would, would, you know, squander their finances like that. And he wasn't a businessman. He didn't get the will notarized, you know. He, he, he didn't know the networking, and, you know, he, he spoke truth to power, as I did, and probably burned a lot of bridges and, you know, told people off who, who had it coming to them who probably could have helped them with his art career because he just saw through a lot of bullshit. Um, there's a lot of art there that's just total crap. There's a, there's some people who make some, some good music and good art who, as people, are, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> they're, they're just not trying to help other artists either. And um, to try to understand things, I, I had to quit my full-time jobs several times over to care for my dad at a moment's notice going to and from the hospital, and then becoming his primary caregiver. Um, all these years, my dad would promise me, hey, you know, thanks for taking care of me. I promise I'll, I'll put a little money aside. I'll help you go get your master's degree, get education. Um, it never happened. We ended up having car problems and struggling just to try to get a car to get to the hospital and, and get the, the, the car fixed. and. Um, the, we, we had to get a new oil burn at one point. We had no heat. I mean, it, it, there, there's been a, a, a lot of um, difficult things financially, and that's not for people to judge us, you know. These, you know, sure, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're white. There's white privilege, and things have probably been exorbitantly much easier for me than other people um, with a different skin color. But... Um, it's not to say that I, I'm to blame for my financial demise, my financial ruin in, in, in this situation. Um, my brother is very angry, and I, I hope he realizes I love him, and I'm trying to do this to save, to save our, our, our legacy so that the art's not locked away somewhere um, uh, in a place that we can't afford to keep, even keep it in storage. Um, everything here it, it's so precious and sentimental and it should be in a museum and a gallery and um i'm tasked with doing that and trying to do that um with the re restriction from a, from a court for the past two years now um it's been extremely painful um i don't know the grieving process they say you just never get over things i i, I never got over my mom's death i, I don't think i'll ever get over it um, I lost my, my best childhood friend, Sky, from cancer. He died on his birthday. And, uh, I, I often wonder, uh, why life can be so cruel like this. Why, and if the pain will sometime go away, I wonder if, if I could just wake up one morning and not, see my dad dying and, and promise me I save the house Ollie don't separate those big paintings put them in a museum they should never be sold take care of your brother make sure you give him a percentage of the, the sales when you get the business up and running take care of your brother he's hurting that's all I got you know I Trying the best, and I, I'm keeping it real because I, I know that there's an audience out here somewhere. Someone's gonna be interested in to see what, what happened to this guy's life. You know, why did it turn out this way? Why did he end up like that? Or what, what's gonna become? You know, because the, the human condition, <laughs> the human condition, the human suffering has been the subject of so many plays, so many. Man, there's so many books here. 
I doubt my brothers read any of these. Mm. We always have hope they would have read one or two, but my parents were very well read and educated and it instilled upon me this reading and I had this very strong ideological fascination. It wasn't really so much cultural appropriation as it was an ideological obsession with living in the woods and wanting to sort of drop out. And my mom and dad used to kind of call that a cop-out. Um, and they were right. And to, to, to a certain extent, you need to have money to do these things. And that kind of gypsy nomadic lifestyle as a traveling troubadour in and of itself is, is almost like a cop-out. And um, Lord knows I've tried, I've tried it all. And um, here I am. And... and uh, you know, I, I I hope my videos bring light to mental health. You know, it's uh, it's not good to be alone, and it's not good to not talk about your feelings, and it's not good to to just make people think that uh, yeah, everything's fine and door, you know, and I'm, you know, this invincible soldier, and and, and bullets bounce off of me. And, Nothing bothers me. That's that's not that's not true. Um, that's how monsters are made. That's how murderers are are manifested. That's how psychopaths um, evolve. And uh, I hope that some of my videos have brought some laughter to somebody, some joy somewhere, and. Um, I have, uh, like a lot of people, a lot of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, a lot of things that uh, I, I, I deal with on a regular basis, but um, losing my dad and then being faced with losing everything that we worked so hard for here, especially the art um, and this house, um, has been devastating to me and, and uh, extremely unfair and I'm hoping to God that God is going to shine the light and have some mercy next week in court and um, my brother and I can make some sort of arrangement here um, that would be to both our benefit thank you for watching I, I, I try to keep it real I try to keep it real and uh I know I'm not the only one going through some hard times and, and um, feeling a little lost. Um, and you know, money money can solve a lot of problems. Money money should sure help alleviate a lot of my stress and anxiety right now. But all the money in the world is not going to bring back the guy who could make me laugh. Like nobody else could, no matter what was wrong. My dad could make me laugh, and we, we made each other laugh all the time. My brother can do that. My brother can make me laugh. He's a very good sense of humor. I've had, I've wondered the, the choice of friends I've had. I've, I've had friends, usually it's you guys, who, the few who could make me laugh and who are so eccentric and wild that it's just, entertaining to me because I guess most people bore me <laughs> like most people kind of boring except for those of you who are kind of on the wild side and like to make me laugh or just vibe with I don't know but uh, my dad was was unlike anyone else I've ever known he was just like a magical person he could you could sit down with my dad and he'd he'd show you things about this flower that you couldn't typically see. He'd, he'd show you where there was purple, where there was blue, different angles and lights and perspectives. And he had so many interests and, and fascinating things to talk to, 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 to me. And we just were very close. And it's very, very hard to fill that void, and especially not having children and, and uh, a family, you know? and, and uh, my my friends had, had tried to, to 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 help me with with sending people up here to want to 
rent the rooms out and whatnot, and that got all shut down by the by the court. So it's been an, an, an extremely diff difficult uh, period of isolation. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in and thanks for your support. Keeping it real as always. <laughs> Cold showers are helpful.